They've been called the thunder from down under. ACDC's electrifying brand of hard rock is as much a trademark as their guitar player's schoolboy uniform. It's rock and roll music, good, tough rock and roll. It was, you know, rib-crunching, skull-crushing, sort of blistering rock and roll. Brothers Angus and Malcolm Young found a soul brother in Bon Scott, a pint-sized wild man with an outsized voice. The effect he would have on some of these people. How can we build a prison and keep him in it, you know? <laughs> With Bon up front, ACDC rode to rock stardom on a high-voltage highway to hell. We drank like, you know, like it was no tomorrow. We woke up and drank again. I can't help thinking that maybe Bon had an inkling that he might have been going a little bit too close to the edge. The band reeled in the wake of their singer's sudden death. I called Bon's parents to, to let them know what had happened. Over the phone, <laughs> yeah. Got a shock in my life. Devastated but determined, ACDC buried and then replaced a legend. I was never brought in to replace Bond. I was brought in because Bond was there no more, except in spirit. ACDC's musical tribute to their fallen frontman became one of the best selling albums of all time. But the loss of Bond Scott would not be the band's only dance with death, as they found themselves linked to a serial killer. One of the pieces of evidence that was left behind was a hat uh, bearing the letters ACDC on it. Then a packed concert led to a crushing tragedy. And Malcolm was following in Bond's fatal footsteps. I was just physically and mentally uh, screwed by the, by the alcohol. But after 25 years of heartbreak and headbanging, ACDC continued to rock. Well, they used to say, lock up your daughters when we came around. Now they're saying, lock up your mothers. <laughs> now, the death-haunted destiny of Hard Rock's most enduring band of survivors, ACDC, behind the music. In 1979, lightning finally struck ACDC. After six years of throwing out sparks, the band's hard-charging, high-decibel rock and roll finally exploded into the mainstream. No stop signs, speed they weren't glitter rockers, they weren't heavy metal. Their schoolboy drag aside, ACDC were in a class by themselves, with a sound all their own. The main thing about it is that it gives rock music a real kick in the guts, you know? On stage and off, the band's rough and rowdy lead singer, Bon Scott, was the embodiment of ACDC's power and passion. Bon was becoming a real hero very quickly amongst the, the tougher guys in the audience. They all wanted Bon to drink the wild life, you know, they loved him. Scotland Yard said the body of 30-year-old Bon Scott was discovered... Then in 1980, five years after he energized the band, Bon Scott was found dead. A post-mortem will be carried out later today to establish... The... Bon Scott died drinking. His death nearly killed the band. I don't think we'll ever get over that one, you know. It's so hard to believe that the next day they're not there. He'd been part of our lives for a long time, you know. I was a bit numb, you know, I was really a bit numb, really. Bon was Bon. He was always the same and never expected anything to happen to him. It was quite a shock. We wanted to continue the band, but we just didn't um, have the will to at the time. For ACDC, the death of Bon Scott was more than the loss of a bandmate. It was a death in the family. And from the beginning, ACDC was all about family. In 1963, Malcolm and Angus Young's unemployed father moved his family from their native Scotland to Australia. Ten-year-old Malcolm and eight-year-old Angus were a pair of immigrant kids looking to fit in. I had to learn what, how they talked and 
you know, because Australia's got a bit mix of Americana and a bit, you know, the um, old world English. The youngest of eight children, Angus and Malcolm remember a childhood with little money, but a wealth of music. It was just like um, learning to read to us. It was all part of, you know, it was the norm. You know, we thought everyone lived like that. Every few weeks there'd be a party for one reason or another. There was an old piano that we had, somebody would get on that, and they would sing on the old rock songs. Malcolm and Angus grew wild about rock and roll, especially when their older brother George formed his own band. The Easy Beats became a big hit down under. In the spring of 67, the Easy Beat scored a hit in America when Friday On My Mind went to number 16 on the U.S. singles charts. Angus and Malcolm were inspired by their big brother's rise to stardom. Our family had just arrived in Australia, penniless. In six months later, you got TV cameras outside the doors, you got a famous brother and a famous band. Eager to follow in their brother's footsteps, Malcolm and Angus quit school and joined separate bands. But in 1973, 20-year-old Malcolm suggested to 18-year-old Angus that they join forces. And I thought, well, why not? It's better than work, you know. <laughs> we told our parents we were both in the same band. They said, oh, I'll give you a week <laughs> to survive, because we fought all the time. But when Big Brother George came home from a concert tour, he was impressed by what he heard. All of a sudden, the kid brothers were still the kid brothers, but my God, they knew how to play. Angus and Malcolm's band needed a name to match their high-powered sound. Their sister Margaret's sewing machine triggered a flash of inspiration. Well, there was a sewing machine that had ACDC on the back of it, and uh, we were tossing around names for weeks, and she just said it one night, and everyone went, that's, that's good. To the brothers, ACDC implied power and energy, but a local cab driver let them know that ACDC had an alternate meaning. Hey, you know what that means, don't you? You guys aren't all gay. They said, what? <laughs> You're looking for trouble, pal, you know? He said, no, no, seriously. Bisexual, it's uh, ACDC. They're going, oh, we better change the name. The name stuck, as did another gimmick courtesy of Sister Margaret's sewing machine. She said to Angus, you know, Angus, you're still more like a schoolboy, Angus, you know, um, you know, we have a schoolboy uniform. I think she said it jokingly, but the next thing, she was stitching up school suits for him. It was a fun thing, you know, I said, oh, you can go as a schoolboy, then you can graduate and come back out in the jeans. <laughs> George, my other brother, he used to try and butter me up. He says, you'll be rich very quick. And of course, you know, at first I believed him, so I thought I'd better earn my keep, you know. In 1974, Brother George and fellow Easy Beats band member Harry Vanda were producing records for a small Australian label. They decided to record ACDC. There was no sort of, do they have it or don't they have it? It was obvious that they had something. ACDC's first single was released in July of 74. The record was a regional hit and led to a small local tour. But the brothers young weren't happy with their lead singer, Dave Evans. You know, he'd go on with his makeup and he'd maybe even blow on kisses. We just grew and grew, not to like it. Malcolm and 